Levenstein's motivational theory for population growth. This theory is very, very interesting because what Levenstein believed was is that population growth is a function of per capita income. So whenever he talked about population growth, his basic idea was based on the Dumont's social capillarity theory that we have covered in a separate lecture. The idea was with higher per capita income, the desire to have the children declines and that is a function of two important things one is utility the three types of utility that he mentioned and the two types of cost that he focused on now again an interesting thing was explained by Levenstein and that was the mortality declines with the population growth but the decline in the mortality is faster and this decline in the mortality which is faster due to better medical services leads to a overall increase in population and therefore, the population, the net population that we say has increased over the years. And in 1974, his paper was uh, the following paper where he focused on his theory of population growth in detail. And that was interpretation of the economic theory of fertility. Now, talking about his two major concepts, which were based on utility and cost are really, really interesting. When he talked about utility, he said that utility comprises of three types of utility. The first utility is a consumption utility. Utility. This is a utility which is derived from the love and the pleasure of a child. Now this utility is going to remain constant however rich a person may be or however increase in the per capita income may be registered. So that utility what he called was the consumption utility. The second utility was the productive utility. Now productive utility is a utility that he believed is due to the fact that the child would grow up and start to earn and therefore be able to sustain the family. That is a productive utility. This utility definitely declines with increasing living standards because people have their savings and they are not dependent on their children for earning. The third kind of utility that he focused on was the social old age security utility which believes that uh, the child would take care However, with again higher per capita income, people are more dependent on uh, the supporting staff for the same purpose. The next is the costs associated with the rearing of the child. There are two types of cost. One is the direct cost and the indirect cost. Direct cost is the cost associated with fooding, clothes, uh, education and that is directly applicable. However, with higher incomes, this cost would increase. Now you might wonder why? Because a person with a decent uh, economic strata would not send the children to a government school, a free government school. They would private go, uh, they would rather go for a private school and there is the direct cost which is associated with education that would rise the kind of food and clothing that is being availed would be better off and therefore the associated cost would be higher the next is the indirect cost associated with the rearing of the child now this cost talks about the number of working days lost by a working mother. Again, it talks about reduction in the social mobility of the parents and therefore this is an indirect cost. It cannot be directly, uh, directly explained. But again, this cost rises with the per capita income because a person of higher per capita income would be having a job where he would be earning relatively more than a person with lower per capita income and therefore the implication if that cost is being uh, cut out would be much much higher so if we try to plot this as a per capita income versus the utility we would understand that the consumption utility remains the same with increasing per capita income as we have explained but the security utility and the productive utility declines the decline in the productive utility is much more steeper as we said the reason attributed to the financial status and the savings of the parents so with higher savings they are less worried about child turning into a productive asset and then both the cost be it the direct cost or the indirect cost increases with the per capita income as we have seen here again when Levenstein was trying to explain 
the rise of the population growth his idea of the rise of the population growth was interesting where he tried to relate it to per capita income now when he was relating it to per capita income he said that a point a is attained and this is the point where you have the per capita income n shows the per capita income and p shows the population growth so this point a is a intersection or a point where there is absence of population growth and economic growth that is seen however if we move on to point b we would have higher population growth in contrast to the per capita income but after this point e any increase in the per capita income would not affect the growth in the population so population would increase till a point that is seen here and beyond it any further addition in the income strata would not affect the population growth and the related cost would the associated cost would remain the same so that is how levenstein was trying to explain his concept now levenstein's theory was brought up with numerous criticisms the major criticism was the relation of mortality rate to population growth and he was unable to explain that the decline in the mortality rate is also due to better advancement in the per capita uh, better advancement in the medical facilities and not just the per capita income so that was the first criticism that was uh, seen by the levenstein theory the second criticism was the decline in the birth rate is not just due to increase in the per capita income there can be policy measures for example in a country like china where there is one family one child rule and that is a policy measure it is independent of the increasing per capita income so these were the two criticisms that were seriously seen by levenstein however his theory was widely accepted and there were numerous extensions that were brought because the concept of resource and fertility which was demonstrated by malthus and lotka voltera were rejected by levenstein and levenstein explained that declining fertility has a combination of factors the first factor is the time spent with a child becomes more expensive when the countries are more productive because the working periods are there and this also there is also a reduce in the demand for larger family size that is there more importance in developed societies is given to education the congestion effect increases because people tend to live on to a common piece of land and as a result you would have the associated cost of living that would be higher in those areas the price of the land would increase in those regions and the concept of saving that he tried to introduce and he said that the productive utility declines with increase in saving with higher per capita income so those were the basics of the levenstein's motivational theory and fertility according to him was a factor of motivation dependent on the per capita income of an individual and that's how the population growth was determined his two graphs and the three utilities and two uh, cost associated to his uh, theory are very very important we have covered numerous population theories and we would be covering many more in the upcoming session stay tuned have a wonderful day